Taiwan is bursting with heaps of fun places to explore. Join me, Amber Hatfield, as I hit up travel hotspots, soak up some culture, and hunt down hidden gems. Let's go! Hello and welcome back to Let's Go. I'm your host, Amber Hatfield, and this week we will be talking about the Philippines. In last week's episode of Let's Go, I chatted with Marianne Shoko, who is my colleague and friend from the Philippines. We discussed about travel and transport in the Philippines, where to go if you prefer art and history, or where to go if you prefer that beachy island kind of life, diving and all that stuff. I also shared some of my personal memories of traveling in the Philippines. You can go and check out that episode on our website, our English RTI website at en.rti.org.tw. In today's episode of the show, I'll be chatting with Marianne again, and we'll hear her opinions on some of the differences that you might spot between Taiwan and the Philippines as a tourist. And we also talk about Marianne's favorite thing, which is Filipino food. So let's go. So what are some of the things that travelers might notice differences in between the Philippines and Taiwan as they travel to both places? One of the other things you will also notice if you travel around the Philippines is the wealth gap mm-hmm. there between Taiwan and, let's say, the Philippines. What I mean by that is, let's say, the household wealth distribution. I find that the wealth gap in Taiwan, although people say that it's about... I think for the past 30 years, Taiwan's wealth gap has surged from 16.8 times to nearly 67 times. Wow. Mm -hmm. But in comparison, let's say, to other developed countries, Taiwan's wealth gap distribution or wealth distribution remains relatively equal. You don't see that huge disparity between Mm -hmm. the wealthy and the poor. I mean, yes, you do see that occasionally when you see someone drive a Ferrari Mm -hmm. in the middle of the city Uh and... You know, all these other things. But I think in in Manila, especially, because it's the capital. So most people go there to find work. And you will see, for me especially, like now that I've lived in Taiwan for a while, when I go back, it becomes very apparent to me. Because from, let's say, shopping in the city center, and then you just travel a little bit outside, you will actually see slums right beside these cityscapes, like really amazing developed areas mm. next to slums. Mm-hmm. So that that is very jarring if if you don't see that very often. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, and I think one of the things also um, that you'll notice uh, coming from Taiwan is safety. Mm-hmm. is um, when I talk about sa- safety, I don't, um, there are a lot of things go into it, but I guess what I'm referring to more is like petty crime. Mm-hmm. In Taiwan, it's a lot safer. Whereas if you go to, let's say Manila, um, there are some things you need to be aware about uh, in comparison. Um, if you go to the islands, I feel it's not as unsafe Mm -hmm. Um, but if you stay in the city I mean just like with any big city yeah you have to be careful Mm -hmm. yeah so what what kinds of things do you mean you mean like kind of pickpocketing things like that so what what do tourists kind of need to do to be aware of that yeah in Taiwan I mean it's very common to see people sitting in a Starbucks or something and then just use their laptop as like a safe a space saver (laughs) and go and order their food or like leave their phone on the table and go to the bathroom or something like that. That's not something you would do in the Philippines then. No. I mean, we hear stories about foreigners coming to Taiwan and they leave their valuables and it's still found. And then you still also have stories where a lot of Taiwanese themselves accidentally, accidentally leave cash somewhere and a lot of cash and it doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to, let's say, the Philippines, um, some things to be aware of is you don't leave your valuables to save a space, uh-huh. obviously. <laughs> um, they would disappear. You don't flash uh, your money mm-hmm. or you don't, I mean, don't go blinged out <laughs> somewhere because yeah. you're just inviting people to steal from you. Uh-huh. 
generally, like, it would be recommended to leave your valuables at the hotel uh-huh. as opposed to carry with you. Um, also, when you use ATMs, it would be better if you use them at secure locations, mm. meaning at a mall, not you know, in a lone street somewhere. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I think these are kind of the safety tips that you get when you travel to any country mainly. I feel like Taiwan's probably one of the safest yes. places I've been with regards to this. Like yes. if I was in the UK, I would also do all of those things too. Like I would never leave my my valuables right. to save a space in a cafe in England. Right. I think um, you can get kind of used to this safety in Taiwan and then mm-hmm. forget about it when you go somewhere else, but make sure to be aware. Right. Yeah. I think one of the things that will also sur- surprise travelers coming from Taiwan when they go to, let's say, Manila, you will see security gar- guards carrying guns, mm. like rifles. Uh-huh. And when you go to the malls, you will also see like they have these bomb sniffing dogs uh-huh. like to check. So... Coming from Taiwan, where guns are not that accessible, uh-huh. and suddenly you go to a city where security guards are carrying like rifles around, that may be quite jarring in itself. Yeah. But I think that is also mm, an indication of the dis- disparity of like the safety between Taiwan and the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Not to say that the Philippines is completely unsafe. But just to give an idea that you do have to be more aware of your surroundings, just Mm. like whenever you go to any big city. Let's talk a little bit about language then in Mm -hmm. the Philippines, you're getting around. When I've been to the Philippines, I have only ever used English. But I'm wondering whether or not, like what percentage of Filipinos speak English or like is it, I mean, have I just been lucky to get around with only English or like should people kind of try to learn some Tagalog phrases or something? But everyone I've met, like taxi drivers and stuff, they have seemed to be able to speak English to me. Okay. Um, in the Philippines, you can get around just using English. You mm-hmm. don't need to worry about that. Um, English and Filipino are the national languages. So you don't need to worry about being able to communicate. And in fact... Speaking of also like differences between Taiwan Taiwan and the Philippines, I would also say like most Filipinos are very happy and friendly and willing to help. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to just strike up a conversation with anyone and um, just talk to them. Yeah, yeah. That that's one of the things that I have noticed when I first traveled to the Philippines. I think it was it in twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, and. I instantly really liked it. I mean, I went out from Luzon, from Manila, down to Cebu and then to like a small island. And then the next time I also went to some other different islands. But every time I always find like people are super friendly and Mm -hmm. just kind of smiley or like even if it's not to you, people kind of seem to be having fun and like light with life, like just kind of happy and stuff. A lot of the time, the people I see and I feel like, oh, that's really nice. I just think... People seem kind of open and just friendly and sociable as well. Right. I kind of feel a couple of things go into that. Uh huh. One would be religion because the Philippines is primarily a Catholic country. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of ingrained in us to believe in God. And what comes with it is you sort of just let God take care of your future. Mm. So... If you have any problems, whenever you travel around the Philippines, you'll see a lot of churches. And this is because of of the Spanish influence. So because of their religion, they believe in God. They trust that God will take care of them. And if they are going through any challenging times, then they trust and pray that the Lord will help take care of them and lead them to a better place Mm -hmm. whether that better place is in the near future or whatever will happen so i feel that that ties into the lightness that people feel Mm -hmm. and also i feel that a lot of filipinos also live in the present Mm -hmm. they don't worry too much about the future Mm. so 
if you if you don't think too much about the future and what it may bring, you just kind of enjoy life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah. And one way to enjoy life is by eating good food. Yes. <laughs> And I know Marianne's <laughs> favorite part to talk about is Filipino food. Yes. So if you go to the Philippines, I'm going to recommend a couple of dishes that you have to try. Uh, one would be adobo. Adobo is pretty much like one of the signature dishes in the Philippines. And there are many different ways people cook adobo in the different parts of the country. But generally... Um, Common ingredients would be like the vinegar, soy sauce, uh, bay leaf, garlic, and peppercorns. Mm -hmm. It's a pork dish. Sometimes they use chicken. Um, it's a savory dish. I guess the closest thing for me to compare here in Taiwan is the sanpei ji, mm. which is also like the three ingredient chicken dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like it. I tried it when I when I was there, and I'm whenever I would order something i'll be like oh yes i like that one i know i know i like that one that one's good <laughs> right another dish to try is lechon okay. which is the roasted suckling pig mm -hmm. so just to give an idea of how good this is anthony Bourdain proclaimed that the filipino lechon is the best pig ever <laughs> oh well if it's got the Bourdain stamp of approval <laughs> <laughs> right um my favorite dishes are sinigang and kare kare. Mm -hmm. Sinigang is a sour soup type of dish. It's similar to tom yum um, from Thailand, except that it's not spicy. Mm -hmm. They use tamarind as a base, mm. so it gives it a. I can't. I don't really know how to describe it, except that it's sour and savory. Uh huh. Yeah, and then kare kare is um, it's oxtail stew. Simmered in peanut butter. Mm. <laughs> They're unique, and I think a lot of food like they bring happy memories for uh -huh. me. So Marianne's drooling right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I don't like thinking of a person who's just trying these dishes for the first time. I'm not so sure. I think just go into it with an open mind mm -hmm. don't expect or think that it should taste a certain way yeah yeah i want to talk a little bit about the how do you pronounce it lechon lechon yeah lechon yeah so would that be comparable to something like in taiwan when you have the roasted pork like the with the crispy skin is it like that it's somewhat similar yes okay yeah mm. but the way they roast it they also use different spices oh. so you have to go and try. Oh, I know. I feel like I may have tried it. I've probably just forgotten. Because when I go to a country, I normally try like all the main foods that you're supposed to try or like okay. the famous foods. So I might have just forgotten. I do have a bad memory. Oh, I'm going to drag you to a couple of Filipino restaurants here. <laughs> yes, they're, please they're, do. They're, um, okay, it's a date. Uh, <laughs> they're not, I mean, it's it's more like you, you will find Filipino restaurants here in Taipei, but they're more like canteens, homestyle cooking. Mm -hmm. So it's different. But if you go to, let's say, Manila, they do have restaurants that that prepare these dishes mm -hmm. uh, really well. Mm -hmm. And um, I can give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I think the last one was, was you were going to talk about sisig. Yes. Sisig is... Um, <laughs> this doesn't sound appetizing when you read it, but it's really good. <laughs> it's um, chopped pig's ears snout pig's cheeks <laughs> and belly you're like what <laughs> but it is really good and um it's served on a sizzling plate so it's crunchy and crispy just all around goodness please it's, please please try it <laughs> it's really good honestly i tried it i actually had no idea that it was ears <laughs> snout and cheeks i just thought it was pork so i didn't even like think about what else it is i'm just like oh it's pork and now I'm like, oh, it was ears and snouts and cheek. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I thought it was really good. I, I like sisig. Yeah. Every time I tried it, I thought it was really good. Yes. Mm. It is pork. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe the menu can just say pork. <laughs> Le <laughs> leave out the ears part. <laughs> right. But I feel like for, for Taiwanese people, we, like here in Taiwan, we'll also eat quite a lot of the different parts of the animals. Yes. Maybe it wouldn't be too 
much foreign. of a stretch yeah. too 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 strange for people like coming from Taiwan mm-hmm. to eat that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited for you to take me to Philippine restaurants in Taipei. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Oh, one do one one thing I do want to add because I gave most um, like a list of savory dishes in terms of dessert. Mm-hmm. Um, I know like Taiwanese do not like sweet stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean they do, but <laughs> their level of sweet isn't as sweet as let's say desserts in other countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the Philippines, when people try the desserts, if they're used to the Taiwanese level of sweet, it will be very sweet. Mm. Um, we like our sweet stuff. What can I say? <laughs> so, if you do like, uh, if you're looking for a Filipino type of dessert, you can try the halo halo. Okay, halo halo just means a mix of everything. It's similar to the Taiwanese chopping oh. shaved ice, mm-hmm. and they have some ingredients that are similar, like the sweet beans. Um, they also have the tapioca balls, but they include um, they include a custard or a pudding in in the Philippine version, and they also have um, what they call ube ice cream, which is kind of like taro ice cream, but you just again it's chopping, so mm. you mix it and then enjoy all of the sweet goodness that <laughs> comes with delicious. it. Sounds <laughs> delicious! Yay! Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's all we got time for. But thank you so much, Marianne, for sharing about the Philippines. I wish we had more time to find out about all the different spots. Anytime. Maybe next time. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That's all for today's episode of Let's Go. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about the Philippines in the past two episodes and that you learned a little something that you didn't know before or joined in on our laughter. Looking forward to seeing you next week in the next episode of Let's Go. podcast google podcast sound on podcast spotify you name it we're on it you can find selected shows produced by rti's english team on different streaming services all you have to do is search for the show or type rti find an episode you find interesting hit play and you'll learn more about taiwan and its people